baseball, if you please. Without bats, bases, or umpire, and not much of a uniform. They used to call it anti-I-over. Now it's just anti. Even beach ball gets monotonous. At least the game has been called on account of something or other. It may even be something exciting. Anyway, it's unanimous. Let's tag along and see. Come, come, girls. Let's get out of here before sundown. Well, that's action. But they're not really as far from the beach as one might think. Many a mountain grows near the seashore, and that turns our little bevy of bathers into mountain mermaids, or snow maids, or something. The girls on the fenders are rust-proof, but so are the fenders, for that matter. Hey, don't start that again. Bullseye! <laughs> After 80 years of planning and three years of actual building, the San Francisco-Oakland Bay Bridge is completed. The largest engineering structure ever conceived and built by men. The main span of the bridge, crossing nearly two miles of water, is hung on four all-steel box girder constructed piers. Each one is 48 stories high. Now for the official opening ceremony. The golden chain is cut with an acetylene torch. Whistles shriek. The harbor fireboats streak the air with ribbons of water. And the first cars to cross the world's largest bridge come rolling along like a regiment of soldiers. From the top of the towers, they're like toy cars on a ribbon with spider webs of steel stretching up to the huge cables that support the roadway. Along both sides, there are heavy steel guardrails. Every precaution has been taken to make this the world's safest as well as largest bridge. Along the second deck roll trucks and buses. There's plenty of traffic. All in all, 30 million vehicles and 50 million people will cross the bridge every year. A smooth way to rough it. One million Americans today are living in homes on wheels. A quarter of a million trailers are those homes. Every day, you see them skimming along the highways everywhere. With the modern automobile, there's plenty of power to pull them up the longest and toughest hills. In Trailer City, Florida, are a thousand of these homes. Their owners park for $1 per week, plus 25 cents for electricity. The life is not expensive, for in a trailer, modern conveniences are within the reach of people of limited means many of whom could not afford them before. Cold weather is seldom a problem, for the inhabitants of this little city follow the seasons. Perhaps a month from now may find many of them 3,000 miles away, across a continent. In Trailer City, you'll find nearly every variety of home, from the one that Dad himself put together on the old farm back in Iowa, to a custom-built deluxe model that cost $8,000. A license plate, is often the only indication that the house is on wheels. As you stroll along the street, you'll find most of the homes are as unlike as their owners. But now and then, you'll find a pair of twins. This one has a huge beak that makes it look like a native pelican. Today, the house next door may be occupied by a retired bachelor banker. If it rolls away during the night, tomorrow's sun may bring a barber with seven youngsters. Stores and shops, too are often found on wheels. This one is a curio shop that's almost as old and weather-beaten as the truck on which it rides. Mother still washes the dishes and most everything else. Just for instance, the lineup that makes a familiar flapping sound and the Monday morning breeze. There are plenty of leisure moments for the housewife. She just can't find a great deal of work in a one-room house. A radio in the car brings entertainment and the daily news and the automatic charging notch on the light switch helps to make sure the battery is kept fully charged, even though the car is driven only a few miles a day. Today may find the trailer family under the shadow of the palms, but tomorrow, the American travel instinct urges them away, over the highway, on spinning wheels. <laughs> whether it's cold or whether it's hot, he tends his traps, whether or not. Yes, sir, the lobster fisherman hasn't time to worry much about the weather. In come the orders, and out go the lobsters. 
But that's getting a little ahead of the story. Up and down the rugged New England coast, most any morning, summer or winter, you'll find hundreds of lobster fishermen like this one, cruising across the inlets and shallow bays, pulling in their traps. While the lobster is known as one of the world's greatest food delicacies, he is also famous for being just about the world's dumbest creature. So dumb, in fact, that he could easily get out of the trap if he had sense enough to turn around and go out the way he came in. But he doesn't. And this is the beginning of the end. The claws are plugged with wooden pegs. And from now on, he's as harmless as a kitten. Bait is not expensive, for a lobster is as curious as he is dumb. And a piece of red flannel is often sufficient to entice him into the trap. With the traps all neatly deposited on the bottom of the bay again, waiting for more customers, the lobster fisherman homeward plods his weary way. But now the lobster tries to get even. He demands cool, damp moss in which to live, and he refuses to live long if he doesn't get it. So, speedy transportation to the packing house is an absolute necessity, and many a truck like this one can be seen along New England highways, giving very special delivery service to his knobs, the lobster. At the packing house, he is speedily transferred to barrels of moss and ice to be rushed sometimes a thousand miles inland where he will arrive still alive and kicking. He may be dumb, but as the main course for a delicious dinner, he's the tops. <laughs> Steaks and short orders at all hours. It comes apart a la carte. He puts it in here, the meat goes ground and ground, and it comes out here. A few years ago, Fido ate the dinner leftovers and was glad to get them, but not so today. In the past year, one or more canine food kitchens like this one have been established in nearly every metropolitan city in the country. And Fido now gets a scientifically balanced diet just what the doctor orders. Yeast, iron, calcium, phosphates. It may look like hamburger, but there's a lot more in it than even Fido would ever suspect. To keep the cost per lunch as low as possible, they use a regular production line. Here is a man who probably has more dog friends than anybody you know. In fact, he has about the same number as there are boxes in this delivery truck. Just for example, it's dinner time again. Gangway. No one but a hungry hound would have ever heard the delivery man out front. But of course, nobody but a hungry hound is very much interested. To the average individual, the dog sounds as if he were doing a lot of unnecessary barking. But actually, he's saying, gee, pal, I thought you'd never get here. Nice to have seen you, and don't forget to come back tomorrow. He doesn't do this every day. This is just to prove that he really enjoys his lunch and how. And while Fido goes to work, you might be interested in knowing that the chef back at the canine kitchens has obligingly taken care of the less fortunate members of the neighborhood who have been on relief for the past few months. Hey. 